So we've looked at general, admin, we jumped over to import. Let's go back to taxes. This is one of the ones that I can kind of only explain what this screen is about, but I can't really tell you what to do. You have to figure out what you want to do be regarding your business. First of all, taxation is turned off. To see how it fully works, let's turn it on. So enable tax, turn it on, and then at the bottom click save because then you'll get more options. Here we're saying, okay, let's have the ability to, to start to tax our products. So we have product prices. Products are tax exclusive or inclusive. The default is exclusive, meaning I'm going to sell a cupcake and it's going to say these cupcakes it's going to say these cupcakes are 299 plus tax. So the tax will not be included the tax will not be included in the product. Inclusive means the opposite. If this is being sold for 399, that includes the tax somehow. So you can decide which of those is best, but usually exclusive, the default is the one most people want. It's going to sell for 299 plus tax, which we define how much tax is a moment in a moment. Product specific taxes um, Replace tax. The default here is also fine uh, because what we could do is have different tax rates for different products if we even wanted. The default here, the specific tax rate that we're going to set up should be fine for most people, although it can get more complex because technically if we're selling a product in California, it should be taxed a certain way as opposed to selling it in Florida, it's another tax rate, as opposed to Alaska, it's another tax rate. And even in California, uh, a lot of us here regionally, our, our tax rate is, sales tax is like 8%. Some places, like in National City south of here, it's 9%. Chula Vista, in my area, it went from 7, 7, 0.75%, it just went up to 8.25% in the last few weeks. So taxing this issue is going to be a tricky one. That's why it's off by default, and that's why it's better for you to get some professional advice. So regarding tax settings, check with the Better Business Bureau, check with the Chamber of Commerce. City Hall or you know, local city business organizations. They're going to give you much better advice than me. So don't listen to me. You go to the professionals and they will tell you, um, you know, at the Better Business Bureau, the BBB, they'll help you find the right resources to figure out the best, best tax rate and all of that. There's also another one, really fancy, the Board of Equalization. They're all about probably setting up taxation and shipping and all of that. Obviously, the easy answer is no tax on everything, sell really easily, and we're done. But if we really want to do it the most legitimately, we have to have taxes report those taxes during tax time and all of that. Let's see, tax logic is another tricky one. This is what I'm saying about some states uh, charge or expect you to charge the tax rate of the home state. Uh, and some expect you to charge the tax rate of the visiting state. So if I'm in California and I buy something in New Jersey, you know, some states will say you're going to get charged New Jersey tax, and some will say you'll get charged California tax. And some states do both, like California, I believe. That one does charge you um, either or, you know, both. You can't get away from it. You know, some states will only charge you if you're buying something in New Jersey, and I'm in New Jersey. Some states, I'm in New Jersey, but I'm buying in Florida, I won't get charged. I don't have all the answers for that. 
the default is fine here. You want to look at the resources that I mentioned to find the full answers. Uh, get yourself, get yourself a Rhode Island lawyer. Okay, so then here's the here's the nitty gritty of how much are we charging? Tax rates. So all markets anywhere that we are selling to, notice all over the world, uh, USA, for example, and then California, or all over the U.S. Yes? You want to make sure you first turn on turn tax on, and then save it, and then it should turn on. Okay, so here I'm saying... Okay, apply tax when billing region is the same as tax rate. My tax rate, I'm targeting California. So when someone is buying my product and their billing address is California, we charge them 8%. I could say shipping. I could say when billing and shipping is the same. So again, I can't give you the full answer here. Keeping it easiest, billing. The default, I'm selling something to someone in California, I'm going to charge them 8%. But as I said, California all over the place is different. You can go one street, one block over, and it's 8% here, and it's 85 here, literally. So you're going to probably overtax some people and undertax other people. And then again, talk to your tax professional to deal with all of that. And I can create different taxing scenarios, adding more there. 1% tax for Canada, let's say. We can tax shipping or just the main product. Probably don't also want to tax shipping, then you're kind of double taxing people. And wars get started over taxation, don't they? So here, then we can further even create these little bundles to do to, to taxation. Band name. It's like a grouping. I want to create a grouping for, you know, expensive products or cheaper products. You can get very detailed here. So, uh, let's say, I don't know, dangerous items. 9% tax rate on that. We can apply this band name to your products on another screen. The default is that everything in my store, if I'm selling to California, gets 8% tax, nothing else. If I apply this dangerous items band to a product, it then gets 9%. Mm -hmm. Rubber band? You know, you wrap the product in the rubber band? I don't know. I would call it groups, but they called it bands. I'll click Save Changes, and that's our look at taxes. It can be a little tricky. The easy is just turn it off, but we'll have to deal with it in other ways. Let's look at shipping. This one's also off. I'm going to turn on Enable Shipping and then save it just to activate some of these settings. Oh, I remember actually we save it in, a, in the opposite way at the bottom. So don't worry, uh, I'm going to turn on Enable Shipping and then OK Shipping City. Uh, so here, this of course will only apply for people that are actually shipping things. If I'm selling services, I don't deal with any of this at all. But let's talk about it in terms of I am shipping something throughout the U.S. or the world. So my uh, origin is San Diego. I'm going to ship from San Diego. So then we this will start to calculate the shipping rates for people throughout the nation. Zip code further to further to uh, properly set it up. Shipwire is an optional paid service that provides e-commerce fulfillment warehouses. 
So if I have a thousand of my product, will I keep it in a storage unit? Will I keep it in my garage? Or will I set up an account at Shipwire, where they will have it in their storage and ship it throughout the territories a lot more efficiently? I don't know the prices, I've never used it, but it's probably hundreds of dollars per month to or thousands to store your products and ship them throughout the US. Again, saving money, I'll keep it in my garage. My garage will stay out on the curb. I can activate free shipping. I can do it in, in the cases of the value of things. Spend $25, free shipping. So I'm going to buy lots of cookies, free shipping. <coughs> These can be changed at any point, of course. I'm just kind of talking about them and turning a few on. You'll obviously set them as necessary on your own site. And then the, the nitty-gritty here is under Shipping Modules and External Calculators. Okay, Modules. Right, right now, if we have a product and we want to give people a few choices, the choices that we have are flat rate, table weight, and weight rate. If I um, look at the settings of flat rate, I then create bands or groups here, saying... If you do not wish to ship to a particular region, leave it blank to offer free shipping and enter zero. So the shipping rate of a flat rate, everything in my store will always have the same shipping rate. I'll tack on $2 to ship to the 48 contiguous states, and I'm going to spend $5 to include Alaska and Hawaii. So someone's going to buy cookies, a batch of cookies for $10, let's say. And it's going to add simply $2 shipping. That may be a great price for me to put that in the post office to send it, or it may be too much. Flat rates are the easiest one to work with, but you'll probably you do it wrong that way. You're ch charging some people too much and some people not enough. So if you do want to use the flat rate ability, you have to turn it on and fill in some of these items. Other ones that are a little bit more accurate but take more work, more setup, are table and weight. Looking at table, price and above, shipping becomes X, and you can add several of these. So if someone is buying at least $25 worth of items, the shipping uh, can be $5. If they're buying up to five dollars of merchandise, the shipping can be two dollars. You can have lots of these levels. Whatever makes sense, whatever is affordable for them, whatever is profitable for you, again, that's a lot of effort. So weight, weight might be the best one. I thought you got free shipping after you spent $25. Yep, so there are these things that come with each other, but this one would be nullified then. Uh, I would say, okay, 24 and above. So if they pay more than $25, it's free. If they pay up to 24, then it's $5. $24.99. There's actually, I read an article that says the psychology of things is that prices are ending with 97 more often now, because we're so used to the 99. So now with the 97, it tricks people like, oh, it's affordable. So it's just <laughs> two cents. <laughs> Actually, in Costco, that, that's a reason for them to fix the last few numbers. Yeah, there's a lot of psychology in this about convincing people to, to buy. 95, Yeah, because if I see something that's 25 whole dollars, no. But if I see $29 with some sense, it, it works a little better. Do you need to check the boxes for that to work? Or yes. You you set up some rates, but you have to activate the rate there for it to be applicable on your product. And weight is similar to that, but then you're dealing with, with your units of measurement. In 
I believe somewhere in my settings uh, we saw what our weights were, pounds and such. If I need to use grams and kilos, I can uh, go back to my other settings screen. But here I'm saying the same sort of thing. If you're going to buy, you know, 20 pounds of cookies, it's going to be a certain price. If you're going to buy you know, one pound of cookies, it's another rate. You set these up, you activate them, and then there'll be options for people to choose. Um, so charge me by weight, sh charge me by price, or charge me the flat rate. What you choose here is up to you. Uh, so I can't give you the right answer, but those are the ways those work. You, you set them up. So if your product has the weight on there, then it'll automatically put that at yes. the shipping cost? Yes, when we create the products, one of the fields that we'll add is the weight. So that'll tie into here to, to properly calculate. Okay, then we have these other shipping calculators. These ones here are completely optional. So if we're dealing with Australia Post Office, then we have UPS and USPS. So UPS is the private company, USPS is the government entity, and both of these then have settings. And it's optional, but if I go look at USPS, United States Postal Service settings, if I look there, uh, you need to go off on your own and create an, an account at, U, at the USPS website. It will link the two together here, then it will give other options for people to choose first class, priority, and all of that. We can't really do it right now because you need to go create an account, set it all up, put your credentials here, and then people will be able to choose these extra options. Similar with UPS, United Parcel Service. Um, you set this up here and set up your customer type and all of this and even pick up pick up and drop off and these are the options. So someone can choose two day air, second day air. You put in your credentials and then uh, you have those extra shipping options. So there's no FedEx there. Can you, is there a way to add that if you wanted to? Yes, under the, under the extensions you'll be able to add more shipping methods and payment methods, as we'll see in a moment. So shipping and taxing can be tricky. Check with professionals. Go to the post office. Go to Postal Annex. Go to FedEx. Talk to someone there. Schedule some time and uh, work with them to figure out what's going to work best for your business. Um, because you don't want to overcharge people and undercharge people, and you don't want to lose money on this. Uh, the post office, for example, has these boxes, these pre-made boxes that if it fits, it ships. So if your product plus the packaging fits in that thing for five dollars, it's done. If it's, you know, five pounds of lead and it fits in the box, in theory, you can ship that. And then you just set this as a flat rate, the cost of the shipping of the box, five dollars, maybe six dollars, just to get a little off the top there. But taxing and shipping is something for you to figure out. Let's look at a more fun screen. Payments. How am I going to get paid? How am I going to make it all worth it? Payments. So we have these ways to accept payments. There's PayPal. A few ways of PayPal. I don't have authorized.net. I don't have Stripe or, or Square. Those would be extra extensions. But the thing that we then get with, uh, that we then have to talk about regarding um, e-commerce is there's always a middleman. Unless it's cash-to-cash -cash transactions, there's a middleman about uh, where does the money go. I have X money and I want to transfer it to you to buy your product. Well, there's someone in the middle, the bank, to make sure it's legitimate and all of that. So at the moment, what is active is the test gateway, and this is a way, it's not obvious, but this is a way to also do a manual payment, like a COD and that sort of thing, under test gateway. So if a person is trying to buy a product right now in my shop, it would say a, a way to buy, is it will say manual payment. You can change that to say COD, you can change it to say other things. What I would recommend for most of us, and they've added some new ones since I last saw this. Um, the easiest one to work with. Let's 
and or, yep, this one's it. So the easiest one to work with here is PayPal Payments Standard. You can go create for free a PayPal account, and all you really need is once you go through the process on your own. Um, I don't really do it step by step in the lecture, but going to PayPal.com, creating the account, plugging in your credentials, it creates an account, and it gives you it gives you here a username. So all you really have to plug in to this screen is your PayPal username and you start collecting payments. That's it, really. It does take the setup of first going to PayPal and setting that up properly with your bank account and all of that and confirming and all of that. But once that is set up, you will be able to take payment from many of these e-commerce plugins because all they need is your PayPal email, your PayPal username, not your password or anything like that. So they, they won't know your password. So if I had here, like sales at vmsync.net, feel free to send money there, actually. That is my real pay yeah. PayPal. <laughs> and I'll start to be able to collect money from this e-commerce plugin. Same one for WooCommerce. Every other setting is just fine, but once I activate here, I can start to collect credit cards, Visa, MasterCard, debit cards, not just PayPal. People think, well, if I use PayPal, I can only take PayPal payments? No, you'll be able to take Visa, MasterCard, Discovery, all of them, debits, credit cards. It just needs the step of setting up PayPal. So how to accept payment. In settings, store, payments, select PayPal, PayPal payments standard 2.0. Add your PayPal email, PayPal username. Go to PayPal.com and create an account. Now the downsides, because as I said, there's a middleman here. There's a payment processor in the middle. Everyone is going to take a cut. If you go with PayPal, if you go with your merchant account at your bank, if you go with Square, if you go with Stripe, if you go, you know, even even Intuit has one. All of these new payment methods, Square, PayPal, you know, those little swiping things. So everyone takes a cut, and it ranges so much. You know, one percent to like five percent. It ranges a lot. Uh, PayPal, I believe it's two point nine or maybe like two point eight something like that, let's say 2.8 PayPal fee. So out of every transaction, PayPal is going to take 2.8% and maybe you can get 2% at another place, so maybe you can get 1% at another place, but everyone takes a cut because when it comes to money, there's money to be made. And you can't really get away from it unless you're doing cash transactions person-to-person -person cash. So transaction fees are a fact of life. You might get low ones, but they'll be there. So here you would go to PayPal. You don't need, do not need a merchant account. Again, all of the most legitimate steps to form a business, getting a business license, getting a tax ID from the IRS, getting a merchant account from a bank. All of those to various degrees are optional when you're dealing with e-commerce. You really need your, this website, this plugin, and a PayPal account, and you're a business selling. But if you want the full protection of the merchant account, if you want the special rates and points that you get, if you want to tax properly, if you want to ship properly, if you want your name listed in the yellow pages, all of those steps, it's more steps and expense because it costs money to get that business license, you have to have a minimum balance on a merchant account, you have to do this, this, and that. 
you, know, you could set this up with a basic personal savings account and the PayPal uh, account and you're in business. So I do not need a merchant's account. Yes. Most of the pages, most of the web stage with the Visa, Master, Cards. Mm -hmm. My second question is that if you have this web in France, mm -hmm. maybe you have a special company, not PayPal, mm -hmm. something in France, mm -hmm. Italy. France Pay or something. How we can add this? That's going to be one of the extensions. So there's there's not a lot of them here. We see that, but if we go again over to product extensions, under the extensions there will be more payment methods from other countries that we can activate. And where is we can use the Visa and Mastercard? It's this. Uh, PayPal will be able to take any payments. So maybe a better thing to write here is uh, this is what's going to appear when people try to shop. I could have it say, you know, pay securely with your credit card. So it's your Visa card, your MasterCard. So PayPal can accept Visa, American Express, anything. So if it's not obvious to people, I can write that here. And that's what will appear for people to let them know I can take any credit card. Yes, like I was saying, there's authorized.net, there's Stripe, there's Cash, Square Cash. There's lots of them. And so one thing that you could do is you could search online alternatives to PayPal. You get plenty of results. Uh, Square is becoming more and more popular. I'm seeing that, however, I'm seeing that more as in physical locations. I visit a lot of you know smaller companies and they have that little thing that plugs into their cell phone to swipe. I got it when you told me about it. Yeah. Years ago, yeah. You said, you said it, I got it. I, I got it in a drawer somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never even used it. You could get, you could get payments. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's these ones that are built in, but we can add more to them with the extensions. Uh, jumping back to one more thing, I guess we're getting close to the end of the day. Uh, one more thing is uh, when, we, when I was talking about cybersecurity over here, we need to deal now with people's usernames and emails and credit cards. Actually, because we're using PayPal, PayPal will deal with people's credit cards. PayPal will have the security in place to process credit cards. So they'll be on our site for a moment. They will be on the PayPal site where the full security is in effect. They pay there. We never get their credit cards. We never store it on our site. We're not liable to various degrees. We finish paying at PayPal, they finish paying at PayPal, and then they come back automatically to our site. So using one of these accounts like PayPal also increases your cybersecurity. We don't touch the credit cards. Or store. See or store them. This is another reason why uh, we would want to have one of these payment processors. There's also protection, fraud protection, fraud alerts. Um, that's why they're taking their cut and, and, and all of those other reasons. So using one of these types of accounts helps your um, customers too in your liability. So on your own, uh, what you should try to do by, by next time, if you want, you can set up a PayPal account and you just plug it in here and it's going to work. We still have a few more screens to look at, but we'll do it next time. Um, I'm going to give you time at the moment on your own to try to back up the site. Uh, and then we'll have a little lab time until 9.30. So follow my handout, number four, to back up your site. I'll turn the printer back on. If you need the handout, I'll put my notes in the network folder. That's it for the moment, and when we come back, we'll continue to set up our e-commerce plugin and then add products and see how it works.